Hey everyone, so I'm just going to give you a quick run through on uh, how I set up our, what you can call church signage in your lobby or, or your foyer. I posted in the visual church media page earlier today and it seemed like there was some interest. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, power on of our TV display here. Uh, power. And the Android uh, computer stick is already running. It's always running. Um, it should start up here once it pops on the TV. And so here is what I have located in the, my Dropbox folder. You can have videos, you can have graphics. If you're going for a more traditional just like signage as in like, hey, go this way for uh, our children's program or this way for bathrooms, you could just drop one graphic file in there. Um, but in this case, we're utilizing uh, more of a promotional style signage. Uh, so here you can see a static image, um, and then the next one will come up. Some of these I didn't have scaled correctly, but I, I can fix that and drag them back in the folder as it stays synced automatically. Uh, this app called Drop Sync will take the folder uh, that you've selected in Dropbox and actually make the files local on this computer, uh, this Android stick. So as you can see, it cycles through whatever we have up here and it'll play videos, no problem. Um, they look pretty meant for signage. I would say it's high def. I mean, you can see a little bit of a uh, little bit of noise, maybe not much at all if you compress it correctly. And so this is what it looks like. Some of you are asking what it looks like. I will actually uh, give you a look behind the scenes here too of what the little computer uh, looks like. Let's see what comes up next. Well, you need to say yes to God. So this is actually a um, right now in your heart, previous, like a clip from the previous service the week before so we can play snippets uh, for people to see before the services from the previous week. It's like a minute or two long video. So let me show you real quick. Uh, what this actually looks like back here. Let's see if I can turn this up enough. Might. It's just a small, here's the one that I uh, posted in my material list, the Diatech. Um, it literally just runs an HDMI out. You can kind of see the cable there and the, the silhouette of it. It's just an HDMI out to the back of the TV. And the only wire that I see with this setup Right now is this uh, USB power cable, which runs down there. But if you have a newer TV, it probably has a powered output, USB output, uh, which you could just plug right back in and then the whole TV itself would just be standalone, uh, turned into a nice little uh, digital display setup for you. Um, what I want to do real quick is I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to actually go into the operating system so you can see real quick how I set it up. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back real quick. I hooked up the uh, keyboard and mouse. Now, there are other ways to do this. This is just what I had on hand. Uh, if you have, like, you can get remotes for this Android um, device or you can hook up actual physical keyboards. Uh, I'm not convinced. It's just super easy to do a Wi-Fi keyboard, but anyways, you can uh, just plug in a keyboard. My phone's not going in focus. It's too dark back there. But actually, it gives you two USB ports for inputs, HDMI output, and uh, USB input for power. So let me show you real quick. I'll just use the keyboard and mouse here. So you can see the mouse when you're plugged in. Uh, and all you gotta do is click. Now we're in here. Let's exit this real quick. Uh, yep, exit. So what I want to do <clears throat> is show you around a little bit. So this is where the Android uh, device brings you. When you start up your Android device, it says, what do you want to be your home app? If you've worked with Android at all, which actually I have not very much. I'm very much a Mac uh, guy, iPhone, iOS. So if you haven't worked with Android, this is what I've noticed. It gives you what do you want to use for your home app? Um, at this point, I say the video kiosk, but here's the deal. It will go right into the video kiosk and start playing. I want to show you around just a little bit. So I'm going to say just once on the media box launcher. 
and it pulls up working interface. So here's uh, my apps. So here's the two apps, Drop Sync and Dropbox. If I scroll down, there's the video kiosk app. Now here's how the order goes that I told you. Make sure you're signed into Google on this device. Um, download these with your Google uh, username in the Google Play Store. Download Dropbox and I'm just gonna click on it and um, it'll open up here. And it's gonna look at just a whole bunch of files that I have in my Dropbox, okay? So you, you've put your Dropbox on the device you uh, download Drop Sync. Now this is the cool part because this uh, video kiosk app that I'm using um, wants the files to be local because that's how it searches. It looks on the device itself. So what we do is with this Drop Sync app, we come over to Synced Folders and you can see here I've selected, let me just do it, click on this here and local folder and device. What happens when I click here? So yeah, more or less, you, you just select. It's called uh, Drop Sync Files. Um, let me see. Yeah, Drop Sync Files. So that's what we select. Um, oh, and here's the one I'm looking for. This is from Dropbox itself. So I had set up it's going to show us here a whole bunch of files in my Dropbox. Um, foyer Video Kiosk. And that's the one I wanted selected. So now whatever goes in that folder in Dropbox um, will then be hard synced locally to this location on your Android device. Okay? Um, and we only want it to download. We don't need anything to upload. Sync is enabled. I'm just going to cancel because I don't need to update anything. Um, Enable auto sync is on, and you can always look at your sync history. So there's when it's sync. If we want to, we can um, actually do the same thing down here. This little, uh, you could manually sync if you open this app up. And then finally, uh, if you want to look at some settings, there's a whole bunch of settings for the Drop Sync app. That being said, the main one that you want to change is the. Um, Make it so that monitor folders and sync in the background, as well as the auto sync interval. It lets you uh, do five minutes, 10, 15, 20, up to a couple hours, but five is the uh, shortest auto sync interval, which is what I use. Um, so yeah, other than that, let's get out of the drop sync app. I'll open up uh, the video kiosk app. So it's going to go ahead and start, it's going to start playing uh, the video kiosk app, which it already knows where to find the images because if I go to settings up here, this is where you're going to get an idea of what you can do with this video kiosk app. So under this, you can um, tell it where to find the folders, sort by how deep do you want it to go into that folder. Uh, you can limit the playback document formats to certain types and show playback errors. Um, let's see. Timers. How long do you want the images to be displayed? Uh, this doesn't affect videos. It's only the images. Um, reboot stability time. How long do you want it to, uh, to wait before the Android reboots? Um, do you want it to say anything when it's doing that? Um, here you go, launch on startup. So automatically when the device starts or restarts, you can have it set to uh, be this app, which is what we want. So that is selected. Then also we've selected on here to restart daily. So every day it will restart and actually reboot. Let me show you here. Um, it is selected to reboot the device daily. And this device already comes rooted, so you can do that. Um, it gives this app permission to run things like that. Um, a whole bunch of other settings here. You can schedule things through your Google Calendar, overlay um, PNG files. If you had like a logo or something, you wanted to be on every single file. Pretty cool. Um, other than that, there's a couple other things you can do. Uh, it's really cool app, so you gotta check it out. Um, 
We did purchase the full version because if you didn't, you'd have a watermark on it. So now, let's try something here. Um, let's power down. And I just want to show you. Um, it should. <laughs> if not, it's because I just messed around with it. But it should, when it restarts, it should automatically... Let me just plug it in here. Hold on. So when it restarts, it should automatically go into the video kiosk app and let's see what happens. If not, like I said, it's because I messed around. But for some reason, it was powered down. All right, let's see what happens here. If it was powered down, uh, the reason why this works so well is because it's fully automated and it will just go right into your video kiosk app. Let's see what happens. And this makes it simple for anybody to operate once it's set up. Okay, so it did do this. It's not supposed to go here. It's because I messed around. So video kiosk and you'd say always. <clears throat> so now we're back to good. Uh, this is how it should have went automatically. When it turns on, just go straight in. Um, just like that. Let's try it one more time. Just so I can demonstrate it. Hold on, I don't have three hands, so I'm unplugging it. Replugging it. It's restarting, because I haven't found a power off for this computer yet, so that's why I'm unplugging it. I can't imagine it's the best thing for it. Let's give it one more shot here. If it doesn't work now, uh, of course it's because I'm making a video, but it uh, works every other time. <laughs> so. Let's just see what happens here. Let's give it another minute. And I hope you guys appreciated this. I, I really want, I have a heart for ministries, especially churches in our situation, which we're a smaller church, 200 up in New England. Uh, we don't have, nobody has loads of money, but we don't really have extra money to be doing lots of things. So for $35, $50 here, um, it's pretty cool for us to be able to do. So there you go. This is what happens when it restarts now from here on out. Um, unless you mess around with things like I did. But it just goes straight into your um, your uh, signage. And you can see this bar at the top. It's set right now to disappear after 30 seconds just from the startup. And then it goes right into it. And a keyboard and mouse usually isn't hooked up, so nobody can really get into it or mess around with it. It's always there. And when you power off your TV, this also makes it simple for people um, to operate if you don't have like a really trained set of volunteers, so the TV's off. They can come in on a Sunday morning, turn on the TV, and this is really all that they'll have to do, is uh, they'll turn on the TV, I guess maybe I didn't turn it on. Now we, you gotta turn it on, but you turn it on, and um, it's automatically going there, um, always. Like I said, the Android device will restart daily on its own, so you shouldn't have too many stability issues. And if you did lose Wi-Fi connectivity, is just going to be at the last place it was synced at. So it doesn't really matter. You don't need Wi-Fi. We could shut off Wi-Fi right now and we'd still be able to have our signage going because the computer's running itself with locally stored files. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this video turned out to be a little longer than I expected. But if you have any questions, comments, uh, comment below, send me an email. Um, thanks guys, have a good day.